So in the last class, uh, we started motivating the need for uh, uh, conditioning on a random time. Right? When we had defined a Markov chain, the initial one, we defined it condition on a deterministic time. And when we condition on a deterministic time, we said that future is independent of past given that uh, state at that deterministic time. Then we also discussed, okay, maybe sometimes it's not always we are going to condition on a deterministic time. Sometimes we will be faced with to condition on a random time. Then we wanted to see if the Markov property holds. Then we have to condition on a random time. So we saw an example where when we are going to condition on a random time, the Markov property need not hold, right? And then we said that if it holds, then that Markov chain we are going to call it as and we are going to call that that Markov chain to satisfy strong Markov property. Which basically said that there is that x2 plus s1 plus j1 x t plus some s m plus to j m g 1 x naught equals to i naught x 1 equals to i 1 all the way up to x t equals to i. What is this equal to? We said that nothing but x of s 1 equals to j 1 All the way up x of s m equals to j m given x naught equals to i. As if from that time onwards, as if the Markov chain begins afresh. Okay. Then the question is here what is this? Here t is my random time. So I hope you guys all remember the notations here. What I, the way I have chosen this indices are, is I0, I1, all the way up to I, there are some states and also I have chosen S1, S2, all the way up to Sm, they are all time indices, belong to time and also J1, J2, all the way up to JM, they are all will also come from state space S. But S1, S2, yeah, these are time indices. We have just said that S1 is smaller than S2, like this. They are not subsets. They are time in they are indices. Okay. So this is basically we are saying that whatever time you condition upon a random time, from that S1 steps further and this S2, sorry, S2 is further S2 rounds from my time t. Okay. So now if this t is a random time. Our now the question is whether this condition holds for what random times. Okay, so we have already seen a case where for arbitrary random times this need not be the case, right? So if you recall our example where we said that if I am t my random time is one step before visit uh, one step before the time of my second visit to state j, then this was not the case. 
and then the question is fine for arbitrary random time this property need not hold but is there any special type of random time for which this property holds it so happens that a random time if it satisfies the stopping time criteria then this property holds now the question is what is the stopping time so let me write this definition here a uh, random time t is set to be stopping time for a process if for all n greater zero there exist a function So, okay, let us focus on the definition now. It is going to say that a random time t is said to be stopping time for a process. I right now I am not saying this process is Markov process or anything, it is an arbitrary process here. If for an any n greater than 0 equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0, there exists a function f n which takes n plus 1 states remember s is what s is the set of states if you are going to take n plus n 1 elements into s that maps it to either 0 or 1 that is f n is just like binary valued function takes 1 gives 0 or 1 based on n plus 1 inputs such that if you are going to ask this question on your random time t what is the question the question is whether my t is less than or equals to n. If you ask this question, you need to say yes or no to this. To say yes or no, I have made it indicator. So, if this condition holds, this indicator is 1. If this condition is not correct or does not hold, then this is 0. So, the left hand side is just yes or no kind of answer, right, depending on whether this condition holds or not. If I can answer this question using this function f n based on my n observations I am going to make till the point n. So, what is this saying? To answer question So, to answer this question whether my random time t on the sample point omega is less than or equals to n, all I need to know is we need to know x 0 of omega, x 1 of omega all over to x n of omega. So, if this is just like expansion of this condition here. 
So, if there exists some function f n which tells you okay, if you want to know whether t is less than or equals to n at sample point omega, all you need to pass on is the n observations you have made about the state at the sample point omega. If you tell that then this function should answer this question. Okay, let us look at some examples. I mean, so like uh, some, some trivial examples could be, uh, okay, anyway, before that let us see this. Suppose let us say fix a state j and I am going to now define a random time to t to be first visit to state j. Okay. Now, if I define t to be like this and I, if I want to answer the question whether t is less than or equals to n on a particular sample point, let us say t of omega, is it enough if I pass on you? this much of state information till n. So, let us take a sample. Okay, let us say this is a chain, right? This is a process evolving. Let us say in round 1 I started with i, then I went to like another state, let us call it i1, then let us say I went to i2 and all the way up to some i n state. Okay, and let us say some of this that could be j here. So, the state j has appeared before n. So, if I ask, if I, if I have shown you this sequence, can you answer this question? Yes or no? So, if you see that, okay, the j has occurred at the second slot itself. So, then and if let us say n equals to 10. So, whether t of omega is less than or equals to n that is whether my first occurrence of state j has happened within 10 slots that is true, right? By looking at this sequence is enough for you to answer this question. If whenever this happens, then I am going to call this random variable, this random time to be what? A stopping Time t is a random variable, right? t is defined on what? t is which where is a random variable from omega to r. If you are interested in a sample point and on that sample point you want to ask this question, whether on that sample point the random time is going to be less than n. What you are going to look at is you are going to look at the sample path. You are observed for that sample point. So, this is the sample path for that sample point omega and then look at whether you can answer this question. You look at whether j has happened before n. If that is the case, then it is true. So, but this is a one case where let us say j has happened. Let us say none of the states contain j and j is let us say somewhere here i n after n plus 3 let us say j. But when I ask this question, I am only going to tell you till this point. I am not going to tell what is the value of my sample point, sample path at x i n plus 1, i n plus 2, i n plus 3, they are not told to you. Can you still answer this question? Yes or no? Why? You are going to say, no, n, this is value is not less than n, this has to be greater than n. So, either you, you say yes or no, right? Then in that case, no, this is not the case. The other is the case. So, uh, your answer is no. Okay. So, 
as long as I give you samples the, uh, till time n or the first n samples you are going to you will be able to an answer this question okay, either yes or no. Okay, Let us look into another example. Let us say now T is the last visit to state J. is the time of last visit to state j. This, this means after this j has happened, j is not going to happen uh, after that at all. Okay. Is the meaning of this random time is clear to you? This random time t is the last visit of state j. Okay. So now if I ask the same question, can you answer this question based on your first n observations? Why is that? Yeah, J might happen somewhere in between this, but uh, it may still happen after that, right? That is not the end of happening of J, it may still happen subsequently. So you cannot answer this question, either yes or no. So in this case, this random time T is not a stopping time. We have seen another random time where we defined T to be one step before the second visit to state J. Is that going to be a random time? Sorry, is it that going to be a stopping time? Check that. Yes, no? Check that. Okay, now. Okay, those who said no, can you tell me why that was not a stopping time? Right, so it depends. So to uh, only when I have all the n plus one information, I can affirmatively say yes or no. Till that, I can't say anything clearly. Okay, now the theorem says that. Basically, the result says that this Markov property holds. If I tell you a priori that my t is a stopping time with respect to my process xn, with my respect to my Markov chain. So let us say, Yes, we are going to say that probability that x t plus s is equals to j g1, x0 equals to i0, all this.
So, then I can write this probability here even though this is a random time here I could write this probability that I have observed all the way up to t and I have noticed that I have taken state i at time t then subsequently I am going to state j in the next s steps that probability is simply p i j to the power s. What is p i j to the power s? This is the s step probability right. So, now we are just saying that as long as this t satisfies this stopping time criteria this property holds whether this t here is a deterministic one or a random one. Yeah, I mean that is the whole point of this right. N was earlier in deterministic now that N is replaced by this random quantity t. T is the random time here. Earlier used to condition on a n which was deterministic. Now, this is a random time here. You are a priori, I am not telling you what is the small n. I am conditioning on any random t here. Yeah, yeah. This is what like this is what like this is what like we are replaced this 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 is what this is a definition or on t here whether t is a random time. We are saying if this t is a random time this property holds that means to define this t to be less than or equals to n I mean to verify this quantity t is less than or equals to n all I need to know and see is the n observation the first n observations. If that is the case you can whatever this t it is this is a random time it can take different different values. If you are going to condition on that random time t and now look at what happens in the next s states that transition is simply governed by your s step transition probability matrix that is what we are saying. So, earlier what? So, just forget this earlier our definition was this right if n is a fixed deterministic quantity. So, the probability that I go to stage in n plus n given all this n first we said that okay, it only depends on x and i does not matter on the previous one and we had called that p i j s. Now, we are saying instead of fixing this n it could be arbitrary it, it could be any t a random quantity. We have already seen that if this t cannot be arbitrary t for this property to hold. You remember when we defined t to be one step before the second visit to state particular state j this was not the case that did not equal to p i j s. But now we are saying that if this t random time has a special property which we called as stopping time then this is true. Even though yes this t is also time index, but this quantity is a random here. We are to apply this all I want you to guarantee is first tell me t is less is a stopping time. To verify that the t is a stopping time you are going to do whether t of omega is less than or equals to n. Once you did this then you have satisfied the hypothesis of this theorem. Then you are just going to say that okay if that then this property holds. I mean to apply this you need to have a stopping time that is where your question of whether we are going to say check t of omega is less than or that is already we have we have to have verified before we apply this. Okay, now how to prove this? Why this is true? Okay. So basically to prove this, so what we need to show is, okay, just reorganize this. This is a conditional distribution on my left hand side, right? 
this conditional distribution I will write as a joint distribution So what I need to show is this is equals to Pijs, right? So this left hand side I have just rewritten in this ratio format. This is just definition of my conditional probabilities, right? So now let us start looking into the numerator here. I want to show this. And T here is a random quantity, random time and we have specifically further assumed that this is a random time, okay. So now let us try to exploit that property. So what I will do is this T here is a random quantity but it takes values, integer valued, uh, it takes integer values, right. It can take 1, 2, 3 like that. So what I will do is I will just try to add it for all possibilities. So notice that I have bought in this t equals to t event here and I have just added it over all possible t values. So these are still an equality here. Okay, now let us try to further unwind it. What I will do is I'm going to group it into I'm going to group in these three parts X naught And then yeah, probability given what? Right? So first I took this and I wrote this as a probability, then this probability conditioned on this, then this probability conditioned on the previous two, all the way up to x0 to xt and then xt plus s equals to j. Okay, so First quantity I am going to return like this. What is this quantity now? We are saying that now see the t is a deterministic quantity here. I am have written this thing. Yeah, so this is I go to state j at time slot t plus s given that at time t I am already in state i and all the previous states are also given. But if I already assuming that this x0 sorry this xn sequence is xn sequence is DTMC right. So what is this quantity is going to be? 
of S. Now let us focus on this. Now what I have given, I have given uh, my DTMC all the way up to time t and further I have also given my DTMC value at t plus s. Now to answer my question whether t equals to t, now I have to basically compute probability that t equals to t, right? Or this is same as knowing whether my t is equals to t if I know something about this. Now, if I am going to apply my rand stopping time property on this to answer this question whether t is equals to t, what all the things I need to know here? I need to know only till t. Does it depend this this t equals to whether t is equals to t, does it depend on x t plus s? No, right? So, I can get rid of this term here. To answer whether my random, my stopping time is t equals to t, all I need to know is only the sample still here. So, this guy vanishes, right? And now I can write it as simply Okay, I am just rewriting this. Now, let us reorganize this a bit. I am going to pull this guy Pig outside because that is independent of T. Summation T equals to 1 to infinity. This is basically for all values of T, right? Now, focus on this. What you have? Probability that x i equals to i naught all the way to x t i and then you have probability that t equals to t conditioned on only these many terms. So, now can I write it as a joint distribution, joint probability of these two quantities? So, this is going to be probability that and t equals to And now further, this has been summed over all possible values of t, right, this probability. So, if I remove the summation, then what is this quantity is going to be? So, what is this quantity is going to be? See, when I started this, from this step to this step, I added the summation because I have introduced this event, right. Now, I want to just reverse that process. So, then what is this quantity? Summation will be not there, but what is going to remain here? Till then x. equals to i, right? So, are we done? Now, we have this quantity. Take this quantity on the left hand side. This is exactly equals to Pij and that is what we wanted to show. So, notice that like the crucially, crucially we use the fact that my random time is a stopping time at this factor. So, if I, because I could do this, I could pull out my Pij term in this fashion. Okay. Okay. So, whenever we want to like, whenever we are uh, not certain that at from which point I want to see the future, then I definitely need to s you make use of this property like, because if the point here at which I am going to look is a random quantity and then I want to use the standard whatever the Markovian properties we have, 
then if I want to do that I should first ensure that the, the random times that I am conditioning on is a stopping time. 